and so they're, they're, every site has the exact same instruments calibrated according to national standards in the exact same way. They have built-in redundancy, and, and this is meant to be a high-quality climate reference network. So what they have here is we have, we have redundant air temperature sensors and relative humidity sensors under these little shelters. The reason that they have shelters is, is you don't want to put a thermometer in direct sunlight, right? That's going to influence. What you're interested in measuring is air temperature. So you put them in these little shelters and you, and you aspirate air through there so that you're actually measuring air temperature and not microclimate under a shelter. So we have air temperature, relative humidity, there's wind speed and wind direction again. There's a pyranometer, again, for solar radiation. Um, what's, and it's a data logger to collect all the data. One of the, and there's also soil temperature and soil moisture probes associated with this. What's unique about this, it's different, is that little gray cone. Do you know what that is? No, as well, but you know what's under the cone? It's, it's, a, it's a satellite transmitter. So when you see those gray cones scattered around, because there are a couple of other instruments, that is sending data directly to a satellite link. And so that's the way NOAA gets their data transferred. So it doesn't go through Bushnell. It does not go through Bushnell. <laughs> but, but again, we, are, we work with NOAA on this. We have direct access to the weather station. We can download the data directly. Patrick can check it to calibrate against our station. So there's a lot of advantages to working with these partner organizations. So this one says, again, the data goes directly back to a national database. And you can find this online. If you, if you look at NOAA, Climate Reference Network, there'll be a map of sites. You can find the Kansa site. And you can even get there and, and see the data. And again, it's all very publicly accessible, which is one of the things I really like about these networks. And again, there's the satellite. This is, again, just a little elect, uh, lightning rod, essentially. Anemometer for wind speed. There's showing the housing for the temperature and relative humidity sensors. I'm curious on the anemometer. Uh, that's a mechanical device. Yep. I know they have uh, Sonic. temperature thermistor sensing devices that do not depend on something mechanical. Why are they still using the old stuff? Yeah, from weather stations, I don't know. They, the, the mechanical anemometers are considered to be, I think, the standard for weather stations. The other kind of anemometer I'm familiar with that kind of use a flex tower. Those look like a series of three fingers pointing up and down, and they're called sonic anemometers. And the way they work is they actually produce sound waves. And based on, I, I, I think, Doppler shifts in the frequency of those waves, you can determine on a very fine scale and very short time frame the wind speed and direction. You need that for flux towers because you need to be able to measure um, like a 10 hertz scale, the, the differences of wind movement. For these, all you really need is more bro a broad brush measurement of wind direction and wind speed. Uh, but, you know, short answer is, I don't know, I'm guessing it would be more expensive and it's more data than they need. A pyranometer, is that on top of the pole? Periodically those need to be cleaned off too, so because dust and dirt settling on them is going to influence things. Oh, and they also have a rain gauge associated with this, but this is inside the fence. So when you see the big fence, this is a snow fence. And again, the idea is this is a standardized station. So even in the desert, they have their rain gauges surrounded by a snow fence. It's not going to snow there. But they have the exact same instrument set up at all the sites to standardize it. So a double ring snow fence. <laughs> and there's the rain gauge protected inside there. And again, the baffle system. That, that is also a vibrating wire rain gauge, just like the one I showed you before. The baffle system is designed again to break up wind. <laughs> that's important. This is another device that satellite transmits data. Um, in this case, the data is transmitted. Um, it's, a, it's a NASA site, and, and Patrick should know, know this. I, I don't. I can't remember which site it's actually transmitted to. Uh, the device is actually over here. This is just the transmitter. Um, this is a, uh, a sun photometer. Simul, you might hear Simul too, because that's the brand name. Simul sun photometer. What this device does is it wakes up periodically and it scans the sky and it measures solar.